Hello. Yes. Here we are. I'm happy this works. I always wonder. Look at the fabulous hair and the beard. That's what happens when you go for eight weeks without shaving. There you go. Eight weeks. Oh my yeah. god. I was expecting bigger. But anyway, this way. That's how. It, that's how it is. That is phenomenal. Okay, let me adjust the voice for a so, how have you been? We've been quite incredible. So, we've been so lucky, honestly. So, look, it, was, it wasn't my call. It was my wife's call to leave early. And we left mid-March. And she is very inclined to becoming a farmer, which I am not as inclined. But slowly, I'm converting because this experience has been life-changing, really, to be honest. Okay, so, but wait. Before, before we go into yeah. what happened to you now... Can we take it a step back? Because I know that many of the people that are... Can you hear me well? I can hear you very well. Okay. So um, what I was saying is that when uh, we first met, the thing that initially you know, blew my mind was your approach to the body, to the way that we move, to um, the way that we have to think and to realize your inner and your physical state and what happens to be you know, maybe a pain in the back and different names for each vertebra and all of that <laughs> to actually know what goes on inside. So maybe for those that haven't been to you or don't know how you, what your practice is, maybe if you were just about, you know, what sure. you're about. I think to make it short and, and precise and concise, it's when you start being a holistic practitioner and that means that you, you start looking for the origin of some ailment that eventually can become a disease. So the idea is to... Obviously, you want to see a patient to make sure that their symptoms is not something we have to worry about and investigate. Once this is clear, and you'll find that lots of people are walking around with some kind of dysfunction. It could be from migraine to problem sleeping to a bit of anxiety to problem digestion with pain, shoulders, elbows, whatever it is. A lot of the time, the, the onset can be insidious. Of course, if you fell in the stairs, we're going to try and understand what happened to you when you were seven. But okay. if something starts and you're like, I don't really understand why, and it builds up and it comes and it goes, and you can f see and feel that things can trigger it, could be something environmental, could be a certain level of stress, could be a certain diet, etc. cetera. You, you notice things if you're a bit intuitive. Uh -huh. um, and actually, we can speak about intuition. We have to try and build back this ability to to be in tune with ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, as a practitioner, you try and pick up little hints here and there, and you realize that most of the time, if not every time, you have this multifactorial issue, which is what life is about. And you find it in people, you're gonna understand their biochemistry, you're gonna understand their biophysics, their biomechanics, and then you have to understand their environment. Where do they move and exchange with their, in their life every day? If you take a bit of all these three, even though there's lots of little particles in it, you find that you can get quite close to your, the origin of symptoms. And if you find this with your patients, because it happens together, uh -huh. and you unleash that, ooh, everything trickles down and you find some kind of harmony. And harmony in terms of, there's so many words here, but is it balance, is it? I think harmony is quite a good one because it means all the systems have to be working intuitively okay. together so that's what i've been 15 years now even more 17 i can't remember and this has been my my kind of quest so it's difficult because people want specialists you know oh i have pain here i want a specialist of my first knuckle i want a specialist of my elbow and and i have nothing against specialists they're very important but a lot of the time people don't necessarily need to go in that kind of precision and we have to broaden our our gaze and try to, this is what holistic means. Look at the whole to try and find what the little things that are tricky inside can affect it all. And that's been my kind of passion really because medicine took me there. But then what do you think happens when you take us and like, throw it into the situation? Well, you know, you're moving less, you're interacting less, your well, mind is struggling. You're talking about the, the, what happens now. Is that what? Yeah, yes, of yes. course. Well, it's, we, it's a very funny, it's not funny at all. So it's a very interesting thing for me. I'm just f figuring out now the impact on the health that this lockdown has happened. And I think first and foremost, it has had two big impacts. One is 
the lack of movement. And I know yeah. we keep saying this, obviously sedentarity, but we are made to move. Breathing is motion. You moving every time is stimulating your circulation. It's stimulating your digestion. It's stimulating every function of your body. So one is movement. And obviously if you're stuck in your house, you move less. But two is the effect that it has had on our mindset and the link, which is where really I stand in my practice, the link between this mindset and the body connection that goes through certain nervous system, but also through the hormonal system, through different mechanisms of stress and compensation, which we could go into details, but not just now. Now, this is what has been challenged. And more importantly, a lot of it has been challenged in the future. So the, the uncertainty, of, of a certain future that we don't know. And in a way, the lack of control of our lives that we think we really hold and we know we're doing this job for that, we're getting money for this and we're putting our kids in those schools, you know. <laughs> Suddenly you're like, hang on a minute. All these things that I, that I really, in my core, feel are the basis and the foundation of this life I'm building are just actually as shaky as any other beliefs. And you realize this world is just a lot of people together believing in the similar things, but they, they are beliefs. So when this is all shambled, I think that you're shaken deeper than you think. And I've seen this a lot in the discussions I've had, but also in the patients that I've had on the phone. I've, I've kept quite a little bit on, on touch there. And it's been quite interesting. And, and, just, and you can see it at the level of the individuality, the one patient, but also it trickles down to the family dynamics because they've been together. So in, let's say you have one, two, three kids, this kind of new dynamic of being stuck, stuck in a good way together. <laughs> Not plenty of good things, but it's, it's challenging. It's definitely been challenging for us, I'm not going to lie. Um, but, you know, like, like when you look for, for ailments in patients, it's a lot of, it's a lot of intrinsic, parametric in, intricacy. It's just and difficult. Find... Let's admit it for us parents. It's crazy. <laughs> Homeschooling alone. I'm sorry. <laughs> so hard. So hard. But you know, this is it's 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 a good challenge. I think it will change a lot of things. And I know I'm hopeful. We read a lot about this. Is there gonna be a before and after COVID nineteen? And and the truth of it is I hope so, because I think it has probably triggered an an eye opening awareness of things yeah. we know. Because I'm I'm curious about the conversion. We know that we have to live in a different way to protect this planet. We know that we are probably you know, running in our little wheel in this right racing and we're not too sure, we know this a bit. But for some reason, you carry on. And I think this probably has helped us to understand, is it what we want? Is it what I need, first of all? Because, and then how do I commute the two? Because what I need and what I want are often quite far apart. And that's what I need maybe to bring back closer. I think there is a chance of that. So how did it happen then that a city boy who's around and mad, <laughs> that goes to become a farm boy. <laughs> do you know, do you, Explain so, the challenge. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, as I said at the beginning, you know, it was, it's, it's true that it was my wife who took us there in, and I'm, I'm very grateful. It was people that I knew that very, uh, very kindly welcomed us on this biodynamic regenerative farm. We have a great interest in soil because I believe like Arizona, that it's the, it's the core of it all. And we have by, I'm not going to go into too much details here, but by monoculturing and by allowing to eat rubbish food, because at the end of the day, we are the end of the chain. If we say no to rubbish food, there is no rubbish food produced. But anyway, we didn't. And that has killed the soil. And the soil is where everything grows. My shirt is made of cotton. It was at some point grown in the soil. And we've depleted this soil by 80% in France. It's huge. There's no more organic matter in the soil. So without fertilizers and pesticide it, the, the whole machine doesn't work anymore and we are coming to the end of that as well so we have to regenerate we have to stop this and there are plenty of things we know we can do you've, you've read you've seen and so that was the first thing was it was extremely humbling so you arrive and you realize the amount of work how much of all of you you have to give to a farm for it to work to your animals to grow things I realized that I knew nothing about it, yet every day I eat. I don't even know how these things, where they come from, how they grow. And then you realize that it's, it's, it's the basis. Without this, there's nothing. And it's not recognized. 
no one thinks that farming is cool. No one. And it's so hard. So you're not financially recognized. You're not socially recognized. It's just like you're just left with this. You have to do everything yourself and prove to the world that there's another way. And that's also not supported. So that was my big, very humbling, number one. Number two, really wanting to spread the word and say there are many ways simple to support these people and actually even in a selfish way this is supporting you because eating that food i can tell you for seven eight weeks rather was quite incredible in terms of taste in terms of how we felt but also in terms of having seen something that you plan to grow that you eat i know it sounds so simple but it changes it all it just makes it tastier not just in your mouth it makes you tastier in your whole system it's quite and you have to experience it to know it. And so it's encouraging people, even if you, I don't say go, I wish you live in a farm. I'm saying that you, it's easy to go and see. And I'm not even entering here how incredible it is for kids. Of course. It's, it's, it's been, and in a way, I, I will tell you an example that brings it backwards. We came back after eight weeks and we have a little girl who's 18 months. So she's really little. And she grew two months of her life. There is a big part of this baby life. And we are now back in London. We're very privileged. We have a very nice flat. We have, you know, but it's, but we are not on a farm where every morning I would take her up out of a cot. We would go and fetch the eggs from the chicken in the chicken coop. Then we would go and see the pigs. Then we would go and, you know, and she, with the dogs around us, obviously all the animals around. And I didn't think so. I kind of, I didn't think so, but she's sad. And it's very strange to see an 18 month little girl she opens her eyes in the morning. The first thing she says, she, all the names of the dogs that were there, the people that were there, and she's eggs, eggs. I want to go and get eggs. And you, I, I didn't expect her to be so attached by this life we had for two months and how much it's affecting her. So I'm not going to say it. I know I can tell you it's, it, it works. You know, kids do take on this. And, it's, and, um, and she grew as well so much in many ways. She's much more dexterous. She's much less frightened, much more open. She has, you know, she was a bit more, she was shy. I mean, she's a bit bigger, but it's, it's really been incredible. And for our son as well. But um, even for, the, the only thing I'm getting is some of the comments are saying you can't hear me well. Me or you? No, the people cannot hear me well for some reason. I don't know. Is there a way you can maybe do the noise a bit down? Okay. Is that better? Can Maybe they hear better. me? Yes, I can hear you well. Okay. Maybe that's better. Um, okay, sorry about that. Back to the kids and the, and, and the farming is the biggest question is because I've been out with nature with my kids and they love it. And yesterday we've experienced, you know, a cow being born. So that was I saw. <laughs> so for, for me, the question that keeps on remaining is, you know, it's easy when you're forced to live through this life when you're first forced to be within the nature and then you kind of give up and then you know you, you really submerge it not give up is the wrong word but you su succumb to it and you submerge yourself in this and there right. are no you know kind of teasers out there in the city you know no, nothing is happening you don't feel like you're missing out anything so when hopefully we go back to normal how do you bring this back that's I... for me is the question we have this discussion a lot as a family and, and with my friends around because I think, I hope, but I also think there will be a bit of a change. And coming back to the farming and what we're talking about and the kids and how do you keep that going? First of all, I think we won't be able, and this is, I'm very aware of the privilege that we had before to be able to travel, but lots of people would be living in cities like London, having in the back of their mind the knowing that it can escape and go little trips here and there, right? Mm -hmm. But if we don't travel as much anymore, because it's going to be different, you're going to have to potentialize where you live because you're going to probably have to find your happiness within the perimeter of 200 kilometers by mm -hmm. car, not flying. So once you've done five or six months of winter, you're not going to take a plane to go in and find the sunshine somewhere. You know, you're going to have to figure out. And I think this is going to be a big change. So I'm not too sure how, but I can feel that if this stays a bit in not as locked down as we are now, but in a very reduced way, we're going to have more local lives. Mm -hmm. And I think that means that you're going to find a local locality that is that you can do more from. That's how I feel. 
So when you say this, I'm not saying I'm going to move on a farm tomorrow, but it's something that for sure I'd never foreseen before. And now I think it's a possibility, but also maybe in a place where I feel I could have more things to do. So closer to the sea, let's say, because I love kite surfing and windsurfing, you know, and I'm thinking, why am I just waiting for these two weeks a year where I'm doing this, whereas I feel so good doing it it makes me happy i want my kids to do it you know things like that and i know it's kind of opening open doors but i think since i won't be able to jet here and there i'm like okay where can we just have all this on a 40 minute car drive yes or a train drive or you know whatever and i find that we'll rediscover a lot of the incredible things we can do around but you also need to, you know it's more difficult from the center of london for sure so i think there's going to be a bit of that on a more practical basis, I really, I really do, and this is something I think we've talking, spoken about before, I encourage people to go on a farm. You're doing it. Go on a farm. Spend one weekend. Your kids will love it. Get your hands dirty a little bit. Plant a few things. Pull some weeds. Help some animals. Push some kettles. Touch. Smell what it has. And you, it does something to you that, it's, that you can't necessarily understand that such but it just it blends you back to what we are i mean we are animals no more no less you can we can think so much about ourselves but that's what we are and coming back to this just it holds you down in a good way you become you, you become yourself again yes less of those things of the cities you know that's which right. i I'm, I'm i love too i love the interactions we can have in cities like london and the incredible mixity of it and different interactions and, and this sort of, you know, intellectual interactions. But I think we need to find a balance between the two. And I think it's possible. I really do. You know, I remember this, this, this one came back to me a lot when I was there. No, we love change. This is the thing. We've, we've, we've come to believe that we don't love change, but we do. And humans, sapiens, to put it this way, are good because remember Darwin said that very clearly. It's not the most intelligent, it's not the strongest, it's the most cooperative and resilient species that win. So it's your capacity to love, embrace, adapt, change. Mm -hmm. And this is, an, this is one occasion. It seems that our environment is changing. The way we're gonna operate in this life that we knew is gonna change. Can we see all the good things about it? And I'm I'm obviously very respectful of all the, the, the terrible things that happened during the COVID-19, but very deeply, I think it is something that's going to, we're going to find so many things coming out of it that will be good for us. We just have to look for them and, and go for them. This is what it is. So I, I believe in that. And specifically, if we draw it back to the well-being industry, what do you think will change there? How we look after ourselves, what we do, you know, generally within the practices. What do you think? Is there anything new that will come out of it? Do you know what's interesting? I see my, my friend, Paul Eric, just joined, for example. I can see some people have been stuck in a very long time in, in, in a flat, for example. And they had to figure out what am I going to do? Because they had to look after themselves, themselves. They had to figure out how to exercise and obviously lots of things through this media was but you know still you have to motivate yourself you have to wake up you have to try and make sure you're doing your stretching a bit of cardio if you can yeah. you have to eat well you have to cook for yourself and at the end of the day the well-being that we talk about jamila is this is am i in tune with me mentally physically and spiritually do i have this capacity to thrive in those three directions do I want to, or am I letting myself go with the flow of this whole society without questioning too much? And I'm not saying you, you should start questioning everything. I'm saying you should start finding yourself again, who I am, what do I love? What do I think I need? What do I want and how do I get there? So food, some kind of mindfulness. I know we, we've heard this, but it seems that this again has, has helped. Some people who maybe find it difficult or you don't have time, you know, time, this idea of time that we are stuck in this. We have no time. People had time. This excuse was not there anymore, right? Yes. They were given time. So you couldn't say, oh, I didn't have time to do this. The books you always wanted to read, the book you wanted to write, if you wanted to write a book, etc. And I think I've experienced this myself, but I've had lots of feedback of people who, for example, suddenly 
have implied a lot of the little tips that I had given them over so many years. And they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they get it. And they knew in their head it was a good thing. But for some reason, they were not implementing it. And suddenly, they're implementing it. And I, I should show these messages are incredible. They're like, oh, finally, I did this, this and that. And I feel so much better. And I know, and they know, we had this discussion for six months, a year. And then suddenly it happened. So I think this is, what it, this is one thing that we have to hold on. Is that change there? And um, going back to, again, once everything springs open, do you think as a result of that, people will be worried for a while to come back into contact? Because you spoke about, I watched one of your other lives, and you spoke about the, you know, the fact that we're going to be covered in masks and that yeah. social distance. And that's a big part of it as well, because I know many people, they're going to go and have a haircut, they're going to go and have a massage and relax physically, whatever they need to do. <laughs> no, I'm just <laughs> but I think at the same time, there is this element which we want to hug, but we are scared. We want to, you know, is there that part? I mean, maybe some of us are I, not scared, but the majority are. There I, are so we, I'm glad you listened to this <laughs> little video the other day. Um, but you know what? I, it's interesting. So I'm back in business very slowly in the practice in London. We came back on Sunday, I said. And I see lots of kids. So mm -hmm. I see newborns. Uh, we do cranial osteopathy of newborns and toddlers all the way through teenagers. Um, it was very interesting. So I saw two new babies and a toddler. And I had, in my practice now, so I have a full gown, I have a mask, I have glasses. You know, I'm literally, I look like a mad professor, especially with this <laughs> hair. And, and it was very, normally well, I sit down. <laughs> <They can't. laughs> I should show you what I look like. It's pretty fun. Anyway, I sit, I sit down and I, we have toys, you know, because kids that you don't know before, you know, you, they have this, it's a doctor thing, right? They're a bit worried. So I play with them, but this was impossible. And I keep thinking we've lost a lot of that eye to eye connections. And in this video, we're talking about the body language. So it, it came from posture. People think, oh, I have bad posture. Um, but posture is not a physical thing. It's a dynamic interaction between my unconscious mind and yours. It's body language. Mm -hmm. And this means that the way I'm going to sit, stand, look, my position, my distancing is all the way I communicate with you or with more people if there are more people. And that's very difficult with a mask, with glasses, with this kind of uniform, let's say, that really covers you. And with adults, of course, you can, but still we'll have to be more intense with our eyes. I just went shopping and, you know, you have to look at the cashier with the eyes and it just changes. There's something more that has changed. But in my practice is huge. And with the kids, I really have to find them. I need to find them in their eyes and, and vice versa. And when we have this connection, then we can do something. Mm. But it's, it's, it's a real, it's very interesting to me how, how I'm going to have to work on this on my everyday practice, but also as we all go out. But does that mean the spice is gone? Because we feed off this, not everyone, but I know I do, of this interaction, of these, you know, the little uh, things that are unseen but felt. I think it's too, it's too early to say, if I'm honest with you. But no, I, 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 but, like but I, I think it's, it's, it's going like to be, I'm emotions. with you. I love that. I mean, it's especially when you know a bit about it, it's fascinating because yeah. you, you can see and perceive where people use it well or if they have been traumatized or if they have been, you know, whatever the... Hello? I'm, uh, I'm not sure what to say here, Jamila. I think <laughs> the, pe number of the people who don't are not too aware of that will have to work a bit to understand that the way they position themselves, the way they look at people is going to be more important in the, in the weeks to come. Maybe and that's a new business that can spring up as a result of this. True. Just the how to train body language the art and eye contact and gaze. But you know, I think it's all empathic. It's like also it's the... It's, I want to get, this is, sounds so cheesy, but it is a bit of love, right? It's a bit yeah. of when you look someone with a real deep respect and empathy and love to say the word, even though, you know, it's not like we love everyone. Um, I think it's, you can feel that. And we will have to use this because, because otherwise it's going to be a very, very cold social environment. 
exactly. Mm. So we're setting up a business as soon as Done. we go up. <laughs> Done deal. One of those crazy ideas that I keep on trying. I know. Ideas. This is always... <laughs> the art of seduction with a mask. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> You know what? This is it. So it's all done. We just have to start as today. I love Seriously. it. I so agree. is there, I mean, I, I, I would like to, they, they told me to keep to 30 minutes. I don't know why that is, but okay, that's, that's but... what we have. So we have about five minutes left. Yeah. I just wanted to kind of, you know, I know many people, they want to help, you know, they want to be part of something. And I know obviously you are very much tapped into sustainability and your wife is doing great work. What yeah. would you say, you know, what can people do at this stage? You know, is there any initiative that you are interested in or things, you know, just to understand a bit where, what you are supporting. At the so we've been, we are going all the way and I'm not saying this is what people should do. Okay. Uh, and it's interesting because it's costing, it's not as easy as one would hope, but you know, have, for example, I'm, I'm going to just go very quickly. Here, but you have no plastic at all in our flat. Zero plastic. No. Okay. So it means that to wow. wash my hair, we have uh, you know, little blocks that you, have, that you put under the water and you do like this and they crumble and it doesn't work so well. So, but, <laughs> no, no, it works, but not as well as your normal. You know, a lot of the of transitions course. have been tricky. Like we don't use any... Soap for cleaning our dishes. We have normal big soaps with a little brush, and that is just it's going everywhere. You know, there's a lot of the little things. It's not as practical yet. Okay. And it's not as not as practical when you go shopping because you have to bring all your bags and all your containers, and it's a mess, and you have to go more, more often. That's what I always find annoying. Yes. Okay. Bottom line, but it shouldn't but be. And that, I mean, that's that's a political issue more people will start producing it. Therefore, the cost should then go down. But also, that's where, this is a political issue yeah. here, but this is where the government should really help for yeah. those to, emer to emerge. And while there's a transition, they should try and help to make it affordable because otherwise, of course, it, it, it's, a big, it's a big stop. But then I think you have to share this information. Know that sometimes it's a bit trickier than your normal way of doing. Yeah. accept that change for the less comfortable but it's so important for the long run and it just makes a difference and you see it may like for our, our kids but nico would never buy plastic never also, it's also never to bring up the kids that already it's within their habit to be different to us right he is he knows so much more than i do about environmental issues and sustainability not just me at his age that's not even comparable but if i'm talking today he's 11 like your son and he has this kind of incredible view of the future as well i mean they're doing a great work at school it's not just us there's a real you know throw in education as well which is very good but the life we've had and we're trying to have is making him very aware when we buy things everything in our even in my practice here everything's second hand there's not one thing here that i bought from a shop you know every single piece of furniture um and i find that First of all, I like the style, but yes, it's much more difficult. You spend a lot of time on eBay, on you know whatever, and sometimes you buy it but and you're like, "Oh, it's more quality." Don't you find that some but, of the vintage stuff they're actually more quality? I believe in this. I believe that if you build something a long time ago and it's still there today, that exactly. it was built properly, and also it was built to last in the first place. Everything else, so it's to not be disposable anymore. You know everything. But it's educating yourself. We're coming back, you know, it is a bit of work. It is a bit of work. It's a bit of an extra work. It's true. But I think slowly, slowly, things around us are, it's easier to go and pick and choose in some certain shops, but you have to make that effort. And, and it, it's true. The, the price is a big issue. And I, you know, I think this is a political idea. But then, so you are going all the way full. But if, you, if someone is completely new to this, yeah. how would you address it? Is it within reducing the plastic? Is it within traveling? Plastic? I think the plastic is the easiest and is the fastest and is the most rewarding. Mm -hmm. I think when you go the following step is, and for me it's the most important right now, is food. Mm -hmm. You have to source good local food that was grown on good soil because mm -hmm. then you help these people to grow. 
-hmm. it's just it's it's okay we're in a circular economy if i help these people to grow they'll get bigger they'll have a bigger farm they'll grow better good food and the food will get cheaper i have to feed that and this again so farm drop is what we use a lot now we've been to this farm hey farm we can get straight from them I'm thinking the beer, for example, to make things a bit fun, or the gin we have. We have an amazing mm -hmm. beer called Gilt and Flint. There was a brewery near us. And imagine, it's organic, full organic, biodynamic, and the water comes from a source from underneath the farm, and it's not treated. It's one of two beers in the whole of UK who has literally has not been treated. And I'm not, please go and try it. It's delicious. So this is the thing. Those things also have, they taste good. It just works and you feel good for them. I'm not talking about the beer, I'm talking about <laughs> the, the food. And, but you know, so that's, that'd be my second one is really be, and be relentless. Mm -hmm. Don't eventually just go to the army, the Tesco, the witch, you know, just try and buy local fruits and veg seasonal. And then you're like, oh, but I want this, I want that. No, it's by season. That's yeah. what you do. But also think about your physiology. Your body is made to eat certain things at certain times. And suddenly when you start eating seasonal food, you don't have allergies so much anymore. Mm -hmm. Surprise, surprise. You know, and this knowledge is everywhere. It's just, it was intuitive to people before because obviously they didn't eat some bananas from Dominican Republic, right? In the middle, it just, it wasn't, it wasn't like this. And that, imagine then the impact on the transportation of all these goods. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, all, it's all intrinsically, if you do it well, little by little, everything suddenly makes sense. And it's a bit of an effort to change. But mm -hmm. remember, this is my word for today. You need to love change. Yes. You need to love change and embrace change. It's good for you. It's good for your brain. It's good for your body. It's good for your future. So how do we, this Most is the shift. Change. Love change. Because that's what Sapiens did. This is why we're here today, you know, I think. That's amazing. Well, someone in the comments said that you should have your own TV show as a result of this. <laughs> well, that's really okay. I'm sorry. So I think that's number two, the second business I should emerge. Yeah, first someday. business, we have, so we have some business to do first. Okay. <laughs> so for those that have joined in, I don't know if I'm still bouncy and echoey, but I think all your recommendations, we can list them so that people, if they do want to start shopping and start being healthier from the, at least tackling the food perspective, they can. Yes. And I think the second person that was very, the second point you made was about kids, so educating your kids and instilling these things in them so then they grow up with better habits than us. No questions. It won't be a they, 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 they won't even think about another way, you yeah. know? It's, it's something, it's a shocking to my 11 year old if someone drops something on the floor. It's shocking. You'd be like, hang on, what's going on here? Shocking. But not just that, shocking to see bad food, shocking to see other kids eat badly or you know yeah. it's like he of course he like a glass you know he wants some coca-cola like everyone else he's a normal kid yeah. but you know he knows it's a very seldom reward for i don't know something incredible you know but he, he's shocking when he sees that or kids on their phones that's sitting at the table of their parents for him it's like how is this possible you know and i i'm i shouldn't say it but i'm quite proud of this because i think that yes it's trickier for us you know of course, if I put two little screens in front of my kids, I can have a, maybe a quiet uh, dinner time with my wife. But then, you know, yeah. so yeah. I'm, we're fighting this and we're saying, no, it's two hours in the whole week and that's it. You spread, yeah. you spread the way you want. It's difficult, but I think it's, it's worth it. No, it's been really interesting to listen you, to from a very different angle, a very, you know, sustainable, zen mind of farmer. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I'm, far, I'm far from it. We're saying yesterday, I mean, Arizona's really, she really got her hands in it all the way to here. I'm, I'm getting there slowly, but it's, <laughs> even that, it's a, long, it's a long way, you know, it's a big change for us and you have to feel it from here to be able exactly. to do it. But you know but, what, I think it would be great to reconnect, you know, two, three weeks down the line yeah. and understand what remained in this journey of taking it from the farm and bringing it into your daily life. And like I said, everything we spoke about, we're going to write it up so people can follow and take these advice on board. I look and forward to set up your own channel. That's what's going <laughs> Yeah, okay. Why not? I'd love to do that. Thank you well, so lovely to see time. you. It's so nice Thank to see you. you. I see you and soon. And hopefully we'll hug together soon with us. Exactly. And we'll, we'll practice this eye <laughs> and contact. contact. Okay. <laughs> see, see you soon. soon. See you soon. Bye -bye. Take care. Bye-bye.